The discussion we're going to have now is about what general forms of exercise actually do support the innate immune system and, and this is really important, what forms of exercise actually deplete your innate immune system. This isn't talked about enough, I think. There are certain intensities and durations of exercise that make us more vulnerable to colds and flus. So we're going to discuss that. Before we do that, I want to just briefly touch into something that I hear a lot, which is the question, if I'm feeling a little bit run down, should I exercise or not? And to be honest, there isn't a straightforward answer to that question. It's impossible for me or for you to know whether or not you were indeed exposed to a cold or flu and you're starting to combat it at the level of your innate immune system or whether or not you're just you know, feeling a little bit sluggish. However, what we do know is that if you are feeling malaise at the level of the body, like your body is feeling different, it's feeling heavier, you're feeling tired, you're feeling tired at a time of day that doesn't make sense given your usual patterns of being tired. You're feeling tired in a way that doesn't make sense given how much sleep you got the night before, right? I mean, here what we're talking about is ruling out any possible you know, life stressor, or you were up too late, or you drank caffeine at the wrong time or something like that. What we know is that you're, if you're feeling that general malaise across your whole body, it is fairly likely that you're coming down with something and that your best response to that would be to go home, take a hot shower or bath, I'll explain why you would wanna do that in a few minutes, and then get into bed early. And even if you can't fall asleep, to just be as still and as relaxed as possible. We know that if you push into bouts of intense activity or even just push yourself to engage in activity when you're feeling run down at that sort of whole body level, maybe a little tickle in your throat, you are going to compromise the function of your innate immune system. And it's very likely that you're going to get more sick than you would otherwise. So here's my suggestion. If you're starting to feel run down at the level of whole body malaise or you just don't feel right, you're best off taking a hot shower or bath and getting into bed or just getting into bed and trying to rest and get as much sleep, probably even a little bit of extra sleep. And here's why. That whole body malaise, that extra fatigue that's not easily explained by other factors in your life have to do with the fact that when your innate immune system is activated, meaning it's already combating a cold or flu, interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 have a way of interacting with a particular brain area called the dorsal raphe nucleus, which is chock-a-block full of neurons that release serotonin. And serotonin from the dorsal raphe nucleus acts on specific regions of your hypothalamus, areas like the preoptic region, for those of you that wanna know, and other areas of the hypothalamus that generate a state of sleepiness. In addition, when we are getting sick, our sleep patterns change. We feel like we need to sleep more, but we don't feel as rested from that sleep. And that has to do with the ways that serotonin interacts with some of the components of the brain circuitry involved in sleep that controls slow wave or deep sleep. But suffice to say, if you're feeling that whole body malaise, and especially if you also have a little bit of a throat tickle, and you're just not feeling right for you, you're not accustomed to feeling that way at that time of day or night, well, then I encourage you to get rest because chances are you're already combating an infection. However, if you are out and about a lot during the winter months, or you're interacting with a lot of people by virtue of work or public transportation or whatever, the gym, et cetera, or your school teacher, maybe your kids are coming home with colds and flus, and you're not yet feeling that malaise, you're not feeling any throat tickle, you're not getting that kind of, um, kind of burning or tickle within your nasal passages when you breathe. You know, we're all familiar with these things, the watering of the eyes that kind of precedes the getting the full-blown cold or flu. Well, if you're not experiencing that stuff and you wanna keep your innate immune system strong and able to combat off colds and flus, then we know that exercise can be an excellent way to increase the output of that innate immune system. What I mean by that is the appropriate intensity and duration of exercise can act as a stressor that promotes a bit of inflammation, yes, the release of cytokines, and a bit of activation of the innate immune system including the production of more white blood cells, natural killer cells, such that you're sort of prompting the innate immune system to almost think that there's something to battle, such that if you ever encounter an infection, you can defeat it right off the bat. So we're gonna get granular here about what we mean by proper intensity and duration of exercise. There's a wonderful review that was published in 2019 in the Journal of Sport and Health Science entitled The Compelling Link Between Physical Activity and the Body's Defense System. And there's a lot to this review article, but I'll just highlight a few of the critical features that are going to directly relate to protocols that I think all of you are going to be interested in. First of all, we know that exercise that's of 60 minutes in duration or less, and that is intense, but not all out effort, okay? Here we're not talking about percentage of single repetition max weight. Here we're not talking about 
70 to 85% of one's VO2 max. What we're talking about is you subjectively gauging what is a 10 out of 10 effort. Like you could not do any more. You could not contribute any more effort to that exercise bout. And that's true whether or not we're talking about resistance training exercise or cardiovascular exercise, like running or rowing or things of that sort. What we know is that if you do that sort of exercise for about 60 minutes or less, you promote the exchange of components between the blood and the lymphatic system that increase the circulation of those cells and chemicals within the innate immune system such that not just during exercise, but for many, many hours afterwards, maybe even as much as 24 hours afterwards, your innate immune system level of baseline activity is ramped up, allowing you to better combat infections such as colds and flus. Okay, so this is an incentive for getting regular exercise of 60 minutes or less per day, making it of sufficient intensity for your innate immune system to deploy more of those chemicals and for your lymphatic and blood circulation to increase their exchange of materials enough that your innate immune system is bolstered. However, it is absolutely not the case that more is better. In fact, it's probably the case that less is better. 60 minutes or less of this moderate to high intensity exercise creates this mild stress response and an increase in the function of the innate immune system. However, People that run a marathon, and as I recall, a marathon is 26.2 miles, if I'm not mistaken. They experience a very different pattern of immune response to that long bout of exercise. So here we're comparing one hour of exercise to three hours. Is that what it takes to run a marathon? I have some friends that are marathoners. So I'm guessing about three, maybe four hours if you're really slow, but somewhere between, you know, I don't know, two and a half and three hours if you're trained up and you're doing it and you're doing them regularly. Well, here's the point. People who just ran a marathon and people who have been training for a marathon and are approaching that marathon are severely immune compromised. The levels of their T cell function are way below baseline, meaning their innate immune system is not functioning nearly as well as it would if they were to not exercise at all. Their natural killer cell activity is also greatly diminished. These are huge, huge reductions in these cells that is in the function of the innate immune system and their stress hormones and their inflammatory molecules such as cytokines circulating in their blood are extremely high. Now, again, we're representing opposite ends of the spectrum here with one hour or less of exercise daily versus 26.2 mile marathon exercise or half marathons as the case may be. And let me be very direct. I'm not discouraging people from running or training for marathons or half marathons. I think that's great. Just understand what you're doing to your immune system.